In this video, I'll show you how to connect your Epson Perfection V39 to, to your Windows PC computer. And I'll also show you how to use the scanner. So let's get started right away. The first thing after unboxing your scanner, you need to connect the USB cable that was included in the back of the scanner over there. Do not plug it in your computer yet. Now you need to open uh, an internet browser and you need to go on the site of Epson to download the software that you need to connect your PC to the scanner. And I'll put a link in the description, this way is, uh, it's easier for you to find this software. So I'm on Epson Canada website and I'll go down and over here where you see downloads, click on it and you need to, you'll need to select your operating system. Over here we're on Windows 10, so I'm clicking on this and I need to find Windows 10 in this list. Mine is a 30-bit, so I'll select Windows 10, 30-bit. If yours is a different one, simply select another version. And then press the Go button. Go down and now you'll have the download button on the right side under Driver and Utility Combo. Press download and automatically the download will start depending on the speed on, of your Wi-Fi. It could take just a few seconds or maybe a minute or two. Once it's finished downloading, this is where it went in my case, double click on the file. Press yes. Then press OK. Then you need to press accept. Then here you're not obligated to leave it check. In my opinion, you should uncheck it if you don't want uh, your data usage to be collected by Google Analytics. So I'll just uncheck this over here and press next. Now it's downloading the scanner driver. Just be patient. It's loading. Now on this screen they ask you to connect the USB cable. So now it's time to take the USB type A plug and go ahead and connect it to your Windows computer. Some newer Windows laptops do not have a USB type A port and if you don't have one you'll need one of these, a USB type A to USB type C adapter. This is made by Apple but it works very well with Windows. I'll put a link in the description if you need one of these. In my case, I'll just connect it here and the setup will automatically continue on the screen. Here they will ask you to select which software you want to install on your computer. In my case, I want everything apart the manuals, so I'll uncheck because I don't need any manual for this. And then I'll press install. Once this is complete, you'll get this screen with the blue check mark over here. Then you can simply press next. Next step, they will ask you to open the scan lid and press next. So let's do it together. I'm opening the scan lid and now I'm going to press next. Now they ask you to put a document facing down. So let's take a document like this one. And the top part should be over here on the front of the printer. So this is the top part of the document and I'll be facing it, I'll put it facing down this way and make sure that you see there's a small arrow on this corner over here. Make sure that the corner of the paper glide it like this and both are touching. Then you're going to close the scan lid, press next. They'll ask you to close the scan lid and finally press this first button, the one on the left side of the blue light. Press it once, like this. And on the screen here on the computer you'll see the scan will begin. This is just a test scan. Um, you won't have to go obviously 
through all this setup every time you want to use the scanner. This is just to make sure that everything works. So this doc document had multiple photos and the software is smart enough to know that there's different pictures on it and it has cropped them separately. You see, that's pretty cool. Now you can exit this software. The setup has ended. I'll show you how to use the, the, the printer. Now you may get this screen as well where it says finish and register. You don't have to register this scanner if you want. That's cool, that's for warranty purpose. In my case, I don't want it. So I'll simply press this button. The browser will open so you can uh, register your printer and I will simply close it. And that's all. So next step, let's open the Epson software that is now installed on your computer. So I'll press the start button here on the lower left side and you see this software has been installed on your computer. The one that you need to scan is the Epson ScanSmart. You see this one. Tap on it to open. And this is the page that you'll see every time you open this software and you want to scan something. Now there's a few settings that you can change. If you go over here, over settings, here we have scan settings. We have three different modes. Auto mode, where the scanner decides by itself if this is a picture or a document and adjust every settings to give you the best result. You have document mode. If you want to force the scanner to scan the, the paper you have put there as a document, and you have photo mode where again you just tell the scanner hey this is a picture don't make a mistake it's more like to guide the scanner i highly recommend you leave it in auto mode i found out after testing this print this scanner that it works really great in that mode and it's able to decide uh, the best settings for each different situation and i think most people don't want to go into the settings every time they have to scan something this is the easiest mode just leave it on auto then you have other options over here, photo enhancements. It's up to you if you want to turn these on or off. For example, auto color enhance, it just means that it will try to make your picture look better. Now, in my opinion, it's better to have an accurate scan rather than a scan that looks better, but it's not representative of what you just put in it. So I just like to leave them off. You have restore faded colors, so if you're scanning old pictures, this could be cool, I guess, to turn it on. And remove red eyes, again, if you're scanning pictures and you just want to remove those red eyes, turn it on. In my case, I like to keep them off. Then you have customize actions. There's many options that are all checked by default. And these options, you're going to see them at the end, after scanning a document. You'll have the choice to save it on your computer, attach it to email, Google Drive, Dropbox, Evernote, print them or send it to OneDrive. If you're not using some of these services, for example, I don't even have a OneDrive account. I don't even have an Evernote account. So I'll just uncheck them. The one I'm not using, this way it's easier once my document is scanned. So I uncheck those. Then over here we have file name settings. So how does it work? Well, every time you scan a document, uh, the software needs to assign a name to that scan uh, file. So this way you decide how will the name look. So you can choose a prefix, how the file name will start. So let's say you like to, you would like to put it uh, scan. Well, over here, I can just write scan and then date in which kind of format you want the date to appear and counter. So if you scan multiple pages during the same day, do you prefer to not have any numbers at the end of that file name or do you want 001, then 002, etc. or with three zeros? That's really up to you. Then we have save settings over here. You can go ahead and play with these options. I suggest you don't touch them. Honestly, uh, the way they are set by default are pretty good for the average consumer, in my opinion. So I won't go into details about them. And then there's other settings, but there's not, nothing there. There's only this, nothing important. So you can go ahead and select close. And now to start a scan, put a document on the scan bed. Let's say I want to scan this small paper here. I'll put it facing down 
And again, the important part is that you align it with this corner, the lower, the front left corner. So if I have something like this, I'll put it in this direction and then I will glide it until this corner touches the corner of the scanner. Then I will close the lid and press the blue button right in the middle. And here we go, we have a preview of the scan. From here you can delete this if you're not happy with the result. You can rotate it in case, let's say it was in vertical mode and it's not right. You can press on this button many times until you're happy with the result. You can also crop it, let's say you don't want these details here. And you have stitch images. Now what it's that, it's in case you're trying to scan an oversized document, let's say it doesn't fit over here, you're able to combine two, three, four, or even 10 different scans into one single image. So let me demonstrate right now quickly. So I have this magazine over here, it's very big, and if I'm trying to scan this at all at once, it doesn't work. You see, there's this portion sticking out. Well, what I can do is to scan this top portion once and the lower portions and the software will combine them together. Let me demonstrate. And one thing that is important, you need to have some overlapping. So if you're scanning the top part, make sure, let's say I'm stopping it over here, all this, make sure that the second scan starts at least over there. So there's a, a small portion, at least I would say 10 centimeters of overlapping. So let me put it here, closing the lid. I'll press the plus scan button here once. Okay, so the first scan is done. You see, that's the top part of the page. And now what I'll do is open the scan lid and scan this lower portion. I'll just switch the document. It's not important, the orientation. So if I'm looking, let me look on the computer rotate, rotate, rotate. So I need to start the scan at least over here. Okay, so if I look, I need to start it here. So I'll make sure that it's right like this. And now I'll scan this part by pressing the blue scan button here with the plus symbol. And now what it's left to do is to simply select uh, these two scans because we don't want to combine it with the first scan that has nothing to do with these. So I'll uh, select both of these simply by, uh, if you don't know how, you simply need to keep shift pressed. Okay, let me show you. So to select these two, I'll select one. I'll click once with the right click. then keep shift press and then click on the second one and I can click on two, three, four, ten images. That's not important. Then you can release and you need to go on stitch images and select advanced stitching. It will take just a few seconds. Let it work. And here we go. This is our scan. You see there's some black bars. It means that it doesn't have, it, it means that these have not been scanned. So what you need to do in that case, don't worry, just press cancel. So just remember which one, by the way, was not scanned. So let's say this corner over here on um, the right side of this character. So what I'll do is to sim simply scan this part that was missing. So I'll put it like this close the scan lid, press the plus scan button, because you can add as many scans as you want, even after uh, seeing the stitch preview. The stitch preview is there to help you see which spot you missed. Okay, perfect. We have the scan. So now I'll select again all the scans that I want to stitch together. These three, stitch images, advanced stitching, and here we go, the black spot has now disappeared. Now, now I won't do it, but if this was something I want, I will scan also this lower left side so I don't have a black spot over there. Once you're done, press OK. 
then press yes it will delete all the single scans and combine them into one image look at this here we go and over here on the preview you can even zoom and look closer if the stitch was uh, made as you wish and I think it's really great you see there's no creases there's no sign that I have scanned three times this document and it has been combined especially where the text is could have been off a bit but no everything looks great once you're done and you want to save any scans that are on the left side panel press the next button and here you're going to have the choice to save it attach it to an email print it or uh, save it on a cloud service if you have had if you leave that check on uh, the settings where we checked um, previously so i'll press save here so i'll press save you can give it as a new name if you're not happy with this by the way you can type anything it's not important you can select in which format i want a jpeg and you can also select where on your windows pc it's saved so i want um, on my desktop here we go and press the save button once you're done and we have the two files that we scan so the first one here it's this one and if we select the second file ending in 002 it's the big stitched image so this is how you use your Epson V39 II with your Windows PC I hope this was helpful if so please leave a like comment down below subscribe to my channel and I will see you in the next video thanks for watching